If we think about leg training, it is hard to not think about doing squats. A squat is one of the most simple and effective exercises you can use to train the majority of your lower body muscles. But a squat comes in many forms. Two of the most popular variations of a squat are the traditional back squat and front squats. In today's video, we will compare the back and front squat and I will also help you figure out which squat variation suits your training goals best. The front and back squat look quite different in terms of how you should execute the movement. But I want to start this comparison by emphasizing that in the big picture, a back and front squat are very similar. Both exercises train mostly knee extension and require your core to stabilize you during the movement. Also, with both exercises the barbell should still travel over your midfoot to prevent you from falling forward or backward. But the obvious difference that separates these two exercises is bar placement. Because with a front squat, the bar is placed in front of you. This changes the mobility requirements of the exercise and also targets certain leg muscles differently. When you place the bar in front of you, you will have to maintain a more upright posture. Leaning forward more like you would do on a back squat results in the bar rolling off your shoulders. Since you are more upright during a front squat, there is also less hip extension. So the hip extensor muscles like the glutes and hamstrings will be less active. This results in your quadricep muscles to take on the majority of the weight during a front squat. Muscle activation research supports this. A 2015 study compared the front and back squat. The researchers found that front squats focuses a bit more on the quadriceps, whereas the back squats train the glutes and hamstrings harder. So if you would like to train your quadriceps harder, a front squat is a good variation. But there are also other benefits to front squats, specifically related to working around low back pain. With a front squat, you need less weight than on a back squat to train your lower body muscles hard. Combine this with the fact that there is less hip extension with a front squat, it is clear that there are less compressive forces on the spine during front squats compared to back squats. If you have a healthy and stable low back, you should be able to handle the compressive forces of a back squat just fine. But if you experience some low back discomfort, it is beneficial to opt for squat variations like the front squat that place less resistance on your spine. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, a front squat also has different mobility requirements than a back squat. First of all, you need to have good shoulder mobility in order to keep your upper arm up throughout the entire range of motion. You also need good thoracic spine mobility to do a proper front squat. One of the challenges during a front squat is keeping your chest up. If you struggle with this, your upper back mobility and strength usually need some improvement. If you use an Olympic style front squat, you also need good wrist mobility. I personally prefer the crossed arm form during front squat since I find that more comfortable. In this case, wrist mobility is less of a concern. Now that you have a good idea of the characteristics of a front squat, let's also look into the back squat so you have a balanced view of what both exercises have to offer. The main benefit of the back squat is that it usually is easier to overload than a front squat. If you are a power lifter or someone that cares about maximizing strength, then using back squats makes sense since you can practice with lifting heavier weights. As shown earlier, the back squat is also more hip dominant, so you'll find that your glutes and hamstrings are trained harder with a back squat. But I must note that even though the hamstrings get trained more during a back squat, also with back squats hamstring activation is still pretty low. Mostly the glutes get more attention with a back squat compared to front squatting. Also, for what it's worth, many people find a back squat simply more comfortable and easier to perform than front squats. Since front squats have unique mobility requirements and the form is less intuitive, you'll find that most people can learn the form of a back squat more quickly. But again, there is not a single squat variation that is best in all situations. Which form you should use depends on your training goals. If you want to focus more on training your quadriceps and also reduce the amount of pressure on your low back, the front squat is a good option. Also, for Olympic athletes, the front squat is beneficial because Olympic athletes oftentimes need to get into the front squat position. On the other hand, the back squat is more effective if you'd like to train your glutes harder during a squat, since it involves more hip extension. It's usually also easier to handle more weight on a back squat. 
So if your main goal is strength development, the back squat lends itself to faster strength progress. Now, you can of course also combine the front and back squat. If you have for example two lower body days in a week, you can easily combine these two exercises and place them in the same training program. As you can see in this example, one of your lower body days can start with back squats and on the second lower body day you can do front squats after deadlifts. This works well because the front squats place less stress on your low back so they are easier to combine with heavy deadlifts. And that's all for this video. I hope you now better understand the differences between back and front squats and also know which variation you would like to focus on more. If you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Leave me a thumbs up if you found the video helpful and I'll see you in the next video.